What is up everybody? Welcome back to Phones and Drones. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are all staying safe. For those of you that follow the channel, you've seen we've had a ton of content for OnePlus this last week or so between the OnePlus 8, the OnePlus 8 Pro, these uh, wireless Z headbuds, the new wireless 30 watt warp charger. There's been a ton of stuff they've released and we wanted to make sure we were able to touch on all of that. Right now though, I wanna go ahead and talk about this amazing phone right here with this awesome glacial green color pattern that you can see. It is actually probably one of my favorite materials and color, the way they did the frosted glass with this than a lot of the other devices that we've reviewed here. So I wanna talk about this. I wanna actually talk about these um, Bullets Wireless Z headphones again and really just give you guys some inside information about all that. So in a brief overview, obviously this is meant to be OnePlus's flagship device. They've kind of gone away from the whole flagship killer mantra because they are really pricing themselves into that pro territory. So originally they always wanted to be known as the flagship killer. Now they started changing with need for speed and now lead with speed. They put a lot of the most wanted features in these new devices. When you charge a thousand dollars for a phone or $899 for the base level phone, that's going to cause a lot of people to rethink these phones to go to just from the get-go. So the question is, did OnePlus do enough here to warrant these charges? They threw in a 120 hertz refresh rate on the screen, 240 hertz input touch on this display, a quad camera setup, a uh, the kitchen sink with specs as you would imagine from all OnePlus's phones from the Snapdragon 865 to 8 to 12 gigs of RAM. It's all here. They actually have water resistance. They finally have added wireless charging via their own proprietary charger. Um, but it does charge with that 30 watt technology, which is what their warp charging wire chargers has been known for for a while. So I personally love it. I'm not in love with this charger. It gets a little loud, but that's not here nor there. The way they have built in these other feature sets with the Bullets Wireless Z as well and the price point they managed to put these in uh, is really amazing. I have personally been using these along with those new Pixel Buds to review recently and they fit great in your ear. You can really kind of get an idea of what these look like. The way they have those simultaneous pairings to jump between device to device is an awesome idea and should be implemented more frequently on other devices. But aside from that, the way they have that battery saving technology with that magnetic closure to stop and auto start playback, the integration with a couple of extra features you get is really awesome. 10 hours of playback, 10 minutes of charge. Uh, that's pretty phenomenal. The Bullets Wireless 2 only gave you, I think, a total charge of maybe it was like seven hours of playback or something like that. Don't quote me on it. But it was not as good as this for double the price. Yes, those came with Apex Codex and these do not have anything of that nature, but they sound great. The bass is deep, the tones are rich. It really does sound pretty good. Uh, for 50 bucks or even less in other uh, regions, definitely give these a look. Make sure to use that referral link. Also for any of these purchases, save yourself a couple bucks uh, to go along with your accessories or your phone purchases. Now, back to the actual phone itself. You are getting that monster display. You are getting that 6.78 inch AMOLED 2K display. It really does look great. It's very vivid. The brightness is amazing outdoors. I never had any issue really seeing it in bright daylight. I wanna say the peak brightness goes up to 1300 nits or something like that, and it really does show. Uh, this looks a lot better than some of my other phones I've seen outside, including the new iPhone SE for what that's worth uh, for you Android guys out there and Apple comparisons. This definitely blows that out the water. I think the iPhone only has a 600 or 700 nit brightness. Definitely not the greatest display ever. One other thing I really wanna call out that has been talked about to no end is really the curved display on this. The water falling, whatever you wanna call it, it just, it, it doesn't register a lot of touch inputs or accidental touch inputs to me personally, but a lot of people have complained about it. I don't mind the edge of the display being curved. I think it looks great, but it's something to keep in mind that OnePlus did opt to keep on this new 2020 model. You can see these awesome new color patterns. I hope the camera really catches it. It's so hard to get a look at this interstellar glow 
because it really does change depending on the angle. But you can definitely see the difference in the screen real estate there. There's a substantial difference, but they both work really good. They look great. You are sacrificing the panel resolution from a 2K to a 1080p display, but still not the worst scenario to come out. Aside from that, you do have that in-screen fingerprint sensor that has worked pretty good for us. I don't like that you don't have that always on display to be able to really see that location of the sensor, uh, aside from the AMU display. Something to consider, but if you guys don't mind that, this is amazing. It's probably one of the quicker sensors I've used. Uh, Samsung's is an ultrasonic, I believe, instead of a uh, some of the other ones, and this just looks and works a lot better personally. So having said all that, like I said, you do have that higher rate refresh screen. Um, it, it flies. You have that gaming center. I did a, a whole video on games on this device and it works great also. Let me know in the comments too. Do you guys have any questions in regards to these or is the price a real turnoff? I'm really curious to hear if OnePlus leaving that really the whole mantra that made them famous for, you know, flagship killer now in that flagship price range. Uh, does that turn you guys off? For those of you guys that really know OnePlus in all the years they've been in existence, they always cut corners on that camera setup. This year is the first time they really took it to a different level. Uh, for those of you that can't see behind me, this is the spec sheet on it on OnePlus's website. You are gonna get those two 48 megapixel main sensors and ultra wide sensors, the eight megapixel telephoto sensor, and that five megapixel filter camera. I don't understand why they went with this, but uh, I haven't used it personally yet. I don't feel like a lot of people will. It looks like washed out images from what I've seen in other reviews. So keep that in mind. You're probably not gonna be using that too much. But this camera system is top notch. I will throw up some photos for you guys to take a look at here. I have had nothing but praise from this camera. I've taken some portrait photos. I've taken some nightscape photos. The regular photos and videos look amazing as well. You are gonna be able to still do 4K 60 video shooting with this camera. You actually have a, an option in here to do 4K 60 cinema shooting. Uh, let me actually go ahead and open this up in the camera app to show you guys. It's really pretty neat. So if you actually go into your settings, if you get this, and I hope you guys can see this okay, uh, you have that 4K 30 cinema and 4K 60 cinema, which gives you the black bars and really gives you that, that look like it's shot on a a high quality camera. So just pretty cool to know 4K Cine 60 frames It is going to use a substantial amount of storage. Again, if you saw that on there, it says 500 megabytes or so for a 30 second clip, but it is what it is. You're not going to shoot that often in that, but it's good to have. What OnePlus has done here finally to, you know, literally minimize the gap between what Samsung's and Apple's and Google's are doing. Um, they are really right on par now. And to say that for a phone that retails now for $899, uh, as opposed to say the Galaxy S20 Ultra, that's $1,400. There is not a $500 or $400 gap in price and quality here. Obviously these have been selling like hotcakes still, they're still sold out, but that means nothing depending on how much that original batch had. It could be, you know, tens of thousands of units to hundreds of thousands, we just don't know. But aside from that, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about that. Use that referral link, thumbs up this video guys, and we will catch you in the next one. Peace.